Have you ever bought an orchid, poured your love and attention on it, only to have it die? Well, the orchid family is huge. There's 30,000 species, 70,000 hybrids, and out of those, there are some orchids which are almost bomb-proof. If there's one guy who knows his orchids from his onions, it's Todd Marshall. In the burbs of Brisbane, Todd's been growing orchids in this family-run nursery for decades. We grow bulletproof orchids, um, mainly cattleyas, dendrobiums, and oncidiums, a host of others which are quite easy to grow, but they're the ones that are really bulletproof. Everything you ever want to know about maintaining these subtropical staples, cattleyas, dendrobiums, and oncidiums is in Todd's head. So let's tap into Todd's top tips for orchid success. The perfect drought plant is an orchid. Easier to grow than a pot full of parsley. You go on holidays and your pot full of parsley, two weeks, no water, it'll be dead. Orchids, you're gonna come home and they're gonna ask, how's the trip? We're doing fine here. Absolutely the perfect plant to grow in the subtropics, I say from Rockhampton to Coffs Harbour, Brisbane smack in the middle, the perfect place to grow all your different type of orchid genera. So how do you pot up these three groups of orchids? Um, to start with the, the dendrobium, you really don't need to repot a dendrobium pretty much for the rest of its life. As you can see, the roots are happy just to, just to cascade over. However, if you do want to repot it, you just go to the next size pot. Not too big, just the next size pot up, because we want to keep the plants under potted so we don't get the roots too wet. That's pretty spectacular. Yeah. And also reassuring that you don't need to pot it up at all. No, no, they're, they're so easy. So how about the Oncidiums? Uh, Oncidium Jerry, um, here's a good example of an Oncidium that really needs to be, to be split up. Now, we're going to repot that into a pot full of bark and perlite. Now, the ratio of the bark and perlite is five parts bark to one part perlite. That gives you a nice air fuel porosity in the pot. So we're gonna take that out, cut it into divisions and repot into about the same size pot it come from. Our rule of thumb is the new pot should be only two thirds bigger than the plant. We would normally plant an oncidium kind of in the middle of the pot because as you can see, it's shooting out all different directions. So from that to that, that'll be fine now for the next four to five years. Um, and that's, that's just how they love to grow. Now we've seen how the other orchids are potted up. Cattleyas are slightly different, aren't they? Dendrobiums, oncidiums, as we've discussed, you usually plant them in the middle of the pot. But cattleyas grow on a rhizome. And when we do the division, we then plant that rhizome to the back of the pot so it has room to go across to the other side. So this plant has a back and a front. That's the way it's going. So this part has to be at the back of the pot. Correct, correct. And we would select a pot that that part of the plant would take up about two thirds of the diameter of the pot. So we're not putting it in a pot that's too big. It's going to hold too much mix. And you're going to use a similar sort of mix of bark and perlite? We are. Perlite gives us a nice air fuel porosity in the pot. We, we must have air moving through the pot. Uh, that's why we use a pot with lots of holes. That's not for drainage, that's for air exchange. Right. Now, the next thing, Jerry, we're going we're gonna to get this plant out of the pot, and there's only one way to do it, and that's be rough. And out it comes. We're going to cut this plant and make a division straight in there with our secateurs. Nice clean cut. And then we're just going to prise it apart. All of those roots need to be trimmed. And that will give us a much stronger root system than when it goes in the pot. And what we're going to do is put a little bit of bark in there first, just a little bit. Then we're going to put the orchid in there, put the roots in. You can see that's where we did our cut. That's the back of the plant now. So we put that to the back of the pot like that. A little tap. Now, most importantly, only the roots 
are to be in the bark. So while we're tapping, we're going to lift up a little tiny bit just so the rhizome is sitting on top of the bark. And that is the orchid done. For an orchid grower, you've got quite a lot of bromeliads here. Well, uh, orchids and bromeliads, they, uh, they're both epiphytes. They grow in the same type of media. But we have our bromeliads as a little trade secret, Jerry. You see, orchids love humidity that comes up. And every one of those bromeliads has a vase full of water as a humidifier to humidify all those beautiful orchids growing up there. That's a lovely idea. Joined up thinking. Yeah. Now, Oncidiums, Cattleyas and Dendrobiums aren't fussy orchids. This Cattleya has shriveled pseudobulbs. Is that a sign that it's thirsty? Not at all, Jerry. So if you see a cane that's fairly shriveled, it's perfectly normal, it's doing its job. If they're all puffed up, that means they've got too much water and you're under premises of um, overwatering. So how often do you water? You should only water an orchid when it needs it. Not because it's Saturday morning, it's my watering day. I can show you a little tip to see if an orchid needs a water. Get your fingertips and pick it up very, very slowly, but don't even look at it. And you'll feel the true weight of the plant. Oh, that's as light as a feather. That needs a drink. So how about feeding? Because orchids are epiphytes, they feed through their leaves. We don't want to put any fertiliser in the bark because that's going to change the pH, it's going to add salts, it's going to help to compost the bark down. So keep the bark hard, fertilise your plants uh, once a week with a good quality, balanced NPK fertiliser. So the nitrogen, potassium levels are about the same and you'll get good growth and good flowering out of those. And you literally just... Three squirts with a trigger sprayer, that's it. The foliage is all nice and wet. Another tip is uh, never fertilise on a cloudy day because the little, the little sponge, the little stomata salts in the leaf are all closed on a cloudy day. It's like trying to feed a baby with its mouth closed. Not much fun. And how about position? Uh, good question. Just try and find somewhere where it's going to get good filtered light for at least six, six and a half hours a day. Too much shade, they're not going to flower. Now, Todd, you're surrounded by at least a million orchids. What is it about these plants that attracts you? The beauty of them is just uh, there's nothing else like it. With their bright, elegant blooms, it's no wonder orchids are highly prized plants. I reckon the difficulty now is deciding how many to take home.